Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, we'll have the latest on a deadly hit and run that happened on San Antonio's north side overnight. Plus, a special grand jury could soon decide whether an indictment is warranted against former President Donald Trump or his company. Well, I was thinking it was going to be a rain-free morning on my way into work, but there were still a few sprinkles on the windshield. You might see them as well. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Wednesday. It is May 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I didn't see the rain on the way in, but I felt the humidity. <laughs> yeah, Mike Ostraheja has the longest commute in the studio. He lives about four blocks away. Did you see <laughs> I didn't any, see any rain? No, no, I didn't see any either. Okay. It's way up to the north. I think you got kind of the stragglers that are moving up uh, north into the hill sure. country. And if you're heading up toward Austin this morning and even just north of San Marcos, there's a pretty good uh, cluster of thunderstorms up there and further up to the northeast. And here's some of those little sprinkles left over there on the uh, far north side and then going up into uh, portions of the hill country. Kendall County. This is some clutter right there around the, the radar site, and those are moving some in, like I said, in portions of the hill country. And then, yeah, there's that big cluster up around Austin, and that's working its way down to the east and southeast. And there may be a stray shower, obviously one or two little sprinkles out in the hill country this morning, a stray shower later on today. 75 here in town. We are about uh, six above normal right now. That's uh, normal average temperatures, upper 60s, and these numbers remain very high. Look at that in hello to 74. Same thing, Castorville for dew point temperatures. That is fog up your glasses, window dripping kind of humidity, and it's going to stay pretty humid throughout the day. Mold is high, but roughly half of what it was the previous day's reading and uh, temperatures will stay pretty much where they are right now low to mid 70s a couple of upper 60s here cloudy skies one or two of those sprinkles partly cloudy later on today a shower east possibly other than that it's just going to be hot and humid we hit that yesterday that is by the way the normal high temperature and of course we've got the lunar eclipse this morning i don't think it's going to be the best lunar eclipse viewing weather because we've got a lot of clouds out there. Maybe as you look off in the kind of western sky in the next, uh, say, half hour, hour or so, you might see a little bit of something if we're lucky with a couple of breaks. Mark? Thank you, Mike. Top story, a driver hit and killed a man crossing a street on the north side last night, then drove off. Happened in the 9400 block of Parambital, just outside of Loop 410. Sarah Costa, live downtown. Sarah, do please have a description of the vehicle that drove off? Good morning, Mark. Yeah, police are still working on getting an accurate description of that vehicle that took off. They do know that it's a sedan and they're, it, they think it might be a black sedan or a red sedan or a combination of both of those colors. But this was a tragic crash where one man is dead this morning after being struck in the 9400 block of Perrin Bidal while he was crossing the road. Police say they were called out to the area just before 940 last night when they arrived. The victim, a man in his 60s, was pronounced dead by EMS. The problem investigators are having with this hit and run is that there are no solid witnesses that saw the crash occur. So it's not clear what time the crash actually occurred and how much time went by between the victim getting struck and a passerby calling police. Traffic investigators are relying on evidence left behind and searching for any surveillance video from businesses in the area to help them track down the driver who hit the man and then took off. At this time, again, that victim, a man in his 60s, police have not released the name of that man who was struck and killed on the northeast side late last night. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A mother devastated after her son was shot and killed at an east side apartment complex on Monday. Police say 24-year-old Delon Weaver was shot in front of his four-year-old son. Investigators say 26-year-old Keith Corley and Weaver began to argue at the complex when Corley shot Weaver with a handgun before running off. He was later arrested by Madison County deputies. Mothers like me are losing our children. Sisters like her are losing their brothers. My grandkids have lost their father because of violence that's not necessary. It was senseless. The senseless violence needs to, just to cease. Weaver's mom says the family is planning a vigil and memorial both here in San Antonio and in Georgia, where Weaver is from. Now, Corley is awaiting extradition back to Bear County to face a murder charge.
Now a new face in the investigation of former President Donald Trump and his business empire. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office has seated a special grand jury. And that panel could decide whether Trump or the Trump Organization will be indicted. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, former President Donald Trump lashing out after prosecutors in New York convened a special grand jury to decide whether to bring criminal charges against him. Overnight, Trump releasing a statement saying, this is a continuation of the greatest witch hunt in American history. It began the day I came down the escalator in Trump Tower, and it's never stopped. This is purely political and an affront to the almost 75 million voters who supported me in the presidential election, and it's being driven by highly partisan Democrat prosecutors. The development, possibly a signal that the Manhattan DA is seeking charges after a two-year investigation. The grand jury will consider evidence in a criminal investigation into Trump's business dealings and could lead to indictments for the former president, his family, or his company. ABC News has learned that already prosecutors have contacted witnesses to appear before the special grand jury, which will reportedly meet for three days a week up to for up to six months. Prosecutors investigating a variety of matters, including whether Trump overvalued his properties to obtain bank loans and deflated the value of those same properties to pay lower taxes. And the district attorney's office also reportedly looking into hush money payments made to women who said they had sex with Trump. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Senate Republicans are reviving negotiations over President Biden's sweeping investment plan. They've prepared a trillion dollar infrastructure proposal that would be funded with COVID-19 relief money as a counter offer to the White House ahead of the Memorial Day deadline toward a bipartisan deal. The White House now assessing whether Biden can strike a deal with the Republicans or whether he will go it alone with Democrats. Heavy rain and a high tide pushing through parts of India's eastern coast as a cyclone moves ashore in an area where more than one million people have been evacuated. Now, the cyclone has already caused two deaths and damaged several homes. The storm has sustained winds up to 87 miles per hour with gusts up to 100 miles per hour. With the storm now almost fully on land, its winds are expected to weaken later tonight. Sri Lanka is racing to protect its coastline from a potential environmental disaster. A burning cargo ship threatening to spill some 350 metric tons of oil just off the coast of the capital, Colombo. The country's minister of fisheries says it's going to be very difficult to keep the vessel from sinking at this point. They do not have adequate resources to manage the entire spill. A specialist team from the Indian Coast Guard has been sent to help. Debris has already been seen washing ashore. And time now is 437. We're at about 76 degrees right now. As you enjoy more time outside this summer, what's the best way to keep the bugs away? We'll have a look at which insect repellents are most effective. Also next, the Judson Rockets softball team making school history. We're going to have a preview of their big game coming up Thursday night in Buda. And outside with live cam, we'll get an update on those rain chances as we've made it to midweek. Thanks so much for starting your day with us here on GMSA. Time for a look at morning sports at 440. The San Antonio Missions trying to end their losing streak against Northwest Arkansas last night. Mission strike first, top of the third, and keep the lead for the rest of the game. The Naturals attempted a comeback in the bottom of the ninth, but was not enough. Missions end their losing streak with a 7-5 win in rainy Northwest Arkansas. The Missions collected four extra base hits during Tuesday's victory. Series continues tonight, starting at 7.05. Judson Rockets softball team headed the Class 6A Region 4 Finals for the first time in school history. They'll be facing Austin Bowie and Buda starting Thursday night. That's after they were able to post back-to-back -back wins on Saturday after O'Connor had jumped on the Rockets in Game 1 last Friday 9-2. They forced a third and deciding game after beating the Panthers 12-11 in Game 2 and then rallied to rout O'Connor 12-0 in Game 3. After playing on three different fields in the semis, it's down to one neutral site for the regional finals. Game one Thursday night, 7 o'clock in Buda. When it comes to upcoming NBA draft lottery, the Charlotte Hornets have won their tiebreaker with the San Antonio Spurs in a random drawing. Both teams finished tied for 11th with 33-39 records. Now the Spurs order is 12th for the time being with a 1.7% chance to win the top draft lottery pick a uh, small percentage
Uh, yeah, <laughs> under 2%. <laughs> <laughs> time now is 442 and about 76 degrees right now. Still ahead, more time outdoors can sometimes mean more mosquito bites. Up next, we're going to take a look at which repellents work the best. Also next, more people are causing problems on flights, causing airline workers to confront passengers. How the FAA is responding to that problem. And welcome back. It's about 445. With more people flying, the FAA says the number of flights between airline workers and passengers are on the rise. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, in-flight chaos. And with more than 37 million people expected to travel for Memorial Day, 2.5 million by air, all eyes are on those rising encounters. <laughs> between passengers and airline workers. The numbers are concerning. The FAA receiving about 2,500 reports of unruly passengers since the start of the year. 1,900 of them refusing to wear masks. Let me be clear um, in underscoring something. Will not tolerate behavior that violates the law. And all this unruly behavior isn't just happening on planes. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the increased number of assaults on TSA employees happening before flights even take off. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, thankfully, we've seen a lot of much needed rain lately, but it also brings out the mosquitoes. And insect repellent is often used to keep them away. 1200 Size Marilyn Moritz on what ingredients work the best. With all this rain, you know they're coming for you. Blood-sucking mosquitoes. Their bites can itch, and worse, they can spread disease. So which bug repellents work the best? Consumer Reports put several to the test. Volunteers applied repellent and 30 minutes later stuck their arms into these cages filled with 200 disease-free mosquitoes. Our testing paints a pretty clear picture. No matter the brand or what kind of repellent you're using, products made with 15 to 30 percent DEET worked the best. A couple they say are best buys are Total Home CVS Woodland Scent Insect Repellent and 3M Ultrathon Insect Repellent 8. The EPA says DEET has been thoroughly tested and is safe when properly used. But if you're still looking for a non-DEET alternative... Products with 30% oil of lemon eucalyptus are good alternatives, and we also have a few high scorers that contain 20% picaridin. No matter which you choose, to be effective, it has to be applied properly. Use a thin coat on all exposed skin. You can spray on top of your clothes, but not under. And be sure to wash your hands after. As for natural repellents made with various botanicals, the test showed those are not as effective. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And they're back, trust me. Yeah, I know. It's kind of been, I forgot about them, mm -hmm. you know, just with all the rain we had and it's like, whew, when, once the rain stops. Yeah. Mike joined us now make, and make sure, uh, well, make sure you dump all the standing water. Just go yes. look around for any little puddles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me uh, yesterday I heard lemongrass is good to repel. You know, there's a lot of different plants that you can plant. Mm -hmm. uh, lemongrass is good for mosquitoes and keep flies away, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yes, with flies. I've yeah, heard I don't know. So you'll smell like a really good house candle. <laughs> it's like better that. than the alternative. <laughs> A lot of talk about the moon. Yeah, beautiful full moon. This is the, the full moon, and there is an eclipse that's going to be going on this morning. As far as trying to see it, uh, not the best eclipse viewing weather, but because it is going to be a total eclipse, and it is going to be, if we didn't have clouds out there, visible. So just keep looking over toward the western sky because uh, we won't see the very end of it. It will be setting. So the eclipse is going to be starting. Uh, I'm going to have to double check. I think it's starting right about now as far as the kind of the outer shadow of the Earth covering the, uh, the moon. So... Again, if you got a hole in the clouds so you can see it, but the beautiful picture. Thank you very much for that. It is hazy out there. It is warm. It is humid. Still have a couple of little sprinkly showers heading out northwestern uh, Bear County and the northern portion of the city just inside 1604 out in parts of the, the hill country. Not a lot out there. And then that, uh, well, kind of a dying cluster right around Austin. And that energy is going to work its way down to the southeast. There is the chance later on today, one or two sprinkles out to the, the east and to the southeast, which is what this computer model is indicating. Otherwise, we're going to have uh, plenty of sunshine, kind of partly cloudy skies. It's going to be warm again today. Yesterday, we did have enough sunshine to get us up to 89 normal high temperature 
going for the same thing today and the next couple of days. So still the, the good news with even long range computer models, and this is due to a lot of the moisture in the ground, helps to keep temperatures down because it takes a lot more energy to heat things up. Now, granted, we still have heat index to, to deal with, but uh, there's no long range computer models that show any just outrageously hot temperatures, which is very encouraging for at least the next couple of weeks. Uh, later on tomorrow, we are going to have, or later on tonight, excuse me, um, partly cloudy sky, so it'll be good moon viewing weather, at least for the uh, the full moon, not the eclipse, obviously, and then some clouds starting off tomorrow and uh, throughout the afternoon hours, we'll have a little more sunshine around here, probably the same situation on Friday. And then uh, Friday night, there is a disturbance that's going to try and work its way down here. We could have some uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms developing late Friday night, and then a couple of showers, one or two of them around Saturday. 85 today at noon, 89 for high temperature, partly cloudy skies. And again, one or two of those showers off to the east, uh, just few and far between at best, or even a thunderstorm way out to the east. And then tomorrow and Friday, pretty much more of the same. And temperature, call it 90 the next few days, obviously, no, to the west and southwest along the Rio Grande. It's going to be even hotter than that. A couple of showers around on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be a washout. You know, there could be a stray one here and there on Sunday. Kind of doubt it, though. And then overall, I think a nice looking weekend. And there are some trending uh, trends that it's going to be a little bit lower in temperatures going into with the extra cloud cover going into the first part of next week. And then some of the long range models have a lot of rain again by the middle of next week. I think we're most happy with the fact that we're still not looking at hundreds anytime yes. soon around here yes. as we go into June. Right. Yeah. Got the humidity. Yeah. So right. it keeps thermometer readings down. It right. still feels pretty hot, but that yeah. double edged sword. It's yeah. nice not seeing 100. <laughs> it, it's very nice. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Mike. Mike. 451 on your Wednesday morning. And coming up next, a special look behind the scenes of Disney's new villain movie, Cruella. Pick three numbers this morning, 534, Fireball 9, daily four numbers, 5459, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 1, 21, 23, 27, 31. And your Mega Millions, 14, 21, 31, 34, 54, Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. A first look at Disney's newest villain movie, plus a final honor for the late Alex Trebek. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm Cruella. How did Cruella become so evil? And what about her hatred of Dalmatians? We'll get answers Friday when the origin story Cruella debuts. Mark Strong co-stars and tells me after seeing it at home and on the big screen, it's a film you have to see in theater. You know, the big ballroom sequences and the heist sequences, you know, when they're picking pockets and uh, all of that stuff. It needs to be seen on the big screen. And the minute I saw it up there, it was, it was honestly, it transformed. It was like a different movie. Cruella debuts Friday in theaters and on Disney Plus, where you'll have to pay extra to watch it. Good for Olivia Rodrigo, her new single, Good For You, helping her set a record. It debuts this week in first place on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles Chart. Her single, Driver's License, also debuted in first earlier this year. That makes Rodrigo the only artist to have two songs from their first album debut at number one. Alex Trebek earning his final daytime Emmy nomination. He's up for Outstanding Game Show Host, which he's won eight times, including the past two years. Trebek died of cancer back in November. And happy birthday to music icon Stevie Nicks. She turned 73 today, while actress Pam Greer is 72. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56 and about 76 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about the newest milestone the U.S. has just reached in the fight against COVID-19. And Sega announcing new projects to celebrate the Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th anniversary. Details coming up in Tech Bites. Ahead on GMSA at 6, millennials have more cases of exhaustion than any other age group, leading some to call them the burnout generation. We'll tell you why later at 6. And let's take a quick look outside with TransSky. Things look like they're moving pretty slowly there at Loop 410 and 151. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police looking for suspects responsible for a deadly shooting that happened overnight. We have a live update just ahead. A major milestone in the nation's fight against COVID-19. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Those details coming up. 
And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're in the mid 70s. It is humid out there, but we're looking forward to a nice weekend. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, as soon as I stepped out, I, I could tell the difference right away just because we had the AC on. So I guess we were cheating inside. So walking out outside was an adventure. It's hazy and humid. Any showers in the forecast still, Mike Coaster Hage? You know, there's a couple of them out there. You said you ran into one or two little sprinkles uh, coming into work. There's a few of them if you're heading out on the north side and uh, far northwest side and then going into parts of the hill country. By the way, the lunar eclipse has begun. Um, don't know if you're going to be able to see it, though. <laughs> don't rush outside right now because there are a lot of clouds out there. If there's a few little breaks, obviously start looking a little more toward the uh, the western sky because the moon's going to be setting about the uh, 6 30 quarter 7 or so uh, 75 degrees right now. It is very humid out there as we were talking about. Isn't it interesting? You were talking about the uh, the air conditioning stuff when you go from outside inside how cold you are because you got that all that humidity, that dampness still kind of sticking to you and then it cools off very quickly. Um, it's not going to be cool outside today, though. 89 and plenty of humidity, although that's a normal high temperature this time of year. And uh, the aquifer has gone up about 19, close to 20 feet in roughly the past month. It went up another half a foot yesterday and the allergens, a lot of mold, although it did come down from the previous couple of days readings when it was on the very, very high side. Here's what it looks like right now on radar. We do have, like I said, a couple little sprinkly showers out there. You almost have to kind of squint to see it all. One or two of them on the uh, north side right in here. This is some clutter right around the radar site there. And then a few of them out in portions of the hill country. Again, very light, just that uh, enough to make roads kind of damp in spots. More showers and this thing's dying off though up around Austin and uh, just to the north of San Marcos. There's some of that leftover energy may help to fire up another shower or two off to the east later on this afternoon. Unfortunately, it is not good eclipse viewing. A lot of clouds out there. Maybe if there's a little bit of a break, you'll see somewhat of the of the eclipse this morning. Partly cloudy later on today. Again, a shower or two off to the east. 89 for a high temperature once again, like yesterday. And, you know, right around 90. Upper 80s, low 90s around much of the area. Obviously warmer along the Rio Grande Valley tomorrow as well as on Friday. Then we go into the Memorial Day weekend. And going to be a couple of showers hanging around here on Saturday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, warm and humid. Overall, I think it's going to be a very nice and you know, what you would expect for the end of May and a very nice Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos is in the house. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, we've spotted a few crashes that could create some issues. If you're going to be heading out the door here in the next few minutes, let's first head on over here to the city's north side where we do have some closures here on those east lanes of 1604 and that's because there was a major crash that was reported right at Stone Oak Parkway. You can see that traffic is slowly starting to build in that area, so do be prepared to slow down if you're going to be heading in that direction. Remember, this is in the eastbound lanes of 1604 right at Stone Oak Parkway. That's what we're going to be keeping an eye on throughout the morning. Another crash happening over here. This is actually at North Pecos, La Trinidad South Street at West Martin. That doesn't seem that it's creating any issues, but it's been there for quite a while, so that's something we will also be keeping tabs with throughout the morning, seeing how that may be impacting anyone's commute as they head out the door here in the next few moments. But inbound times, let's check what it's going to look like if you're going to be heading into the downtown San Antonio area. 24 minutes if you're coming in from I-10 from Bernie, 26 minutes on 281 coming in from Bolverde. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels from 35, do expect about a 26 minute commute time right now. Taking a look here at Transguide, we see 35 at Alamo, 37 at Salado Creek. Things looking pretty smooth so far, but Mark Seth, we're going to be keeping a close eye and see how things develop for this Wednesday morning. Thank you, Stephen. A man is dead this morning after he was shot in the head last night on the city's far east side. That shooting happened in the Hidden Lake Trailer Park off of East Houston outside of Loop 410. Sarah Costa is live downtown with what police know so far. And Sarah, did police say anything about a suspect? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie, and no, not really. They don't know if it was one suspect or multiple suspects involved in this deadly shooting. They were able to get some information about two cars that left that area shortly after that man was shot, a black Dodge Ch Challenger and a black or gray Mustang that left that area. So police said they were called out around 1120 last night to the Hidden Lake Trailer Park the intersection of Saints Haven and Saints Ark inside the park. They say they found a 25 year old man with a gunshot wound to the head. Police say it was a block away from where they found the victim 
where they believe this fatal shooting actually happened because they found several shell casings further down the street on St. Haven. Investigators are interviewing residents in that area for any possible witnesses. It was a resident who called police after they found that man lying on the ground with a gunshot wound to his head. Police were able to get that information from those interviews about those two cars. Again, possibly a black Dodge Challenger and a black or gray Mustang driving off from that area shortly after that shooting occurred. As for the man who died in this shooting, police have not released the name of that 25-year-old victim. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. A major benchmark this morning in the nation's pandemic. The CDC reports more than half of adults in the country are now fully vaccinated. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. This morning, a major milestone in the fight against COVID-19. More than half of U.S. adults are now fully vaccinated. In proof the vaccines are working, U.S. hospitals are now admitting about five times fewer COVID patients than in January. The vaccines are working extremely well. Less than 0.01% of people who were vaccinated so far have gotten a breakthrough infection. Ahead of Memorial Day weekend, the director of the CDC with this warning to Americans who haven't yet gotten their shots. If you are not vaccinated, our guidance has not changed for you. You remain at risk of infection. You still need to mask and take other precautions. As younger Americans roll up their sleeves. I feel a lot better knowing that I'm safer. They could soon have another vaccine option after Moderna reported its vaccine is 100% effective against COVID in 12 to 17 year olds with no safety concerns. But with the pace of vaccinations still slowing, more states are getting creative with incentives. Ohio says vaccinations surged 45% and 94% among teens after launching its $1 million vaccine lottery. Colorado is now the sixth state to open its own lottery. May the odds be forever in your favor. And in Delaware, state officials announced vaccinated residents can enter a lottery to win cash or one of two low numbered license plates, which by some accounts is an even more coveted prize in the state. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, it's not even easier for family, friends, even co-workers to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The state's mobile vaccine program is expanding in an effort to help more Texans. All you need is a group of five or more to request a team come to you. It can be made up of co-workers at a business, members of a family, or a gathering of volunteers or friends. Two businesses in Austin already helped their employees. If you'd like to request a visit, call the Texas Mobile Vaccine Call Center between the hours of 8 to 5, Mondays through Saturdays, and the number is on your screen right there at the middle. It's, uh, it's 844-90-TEXAS. A local father still searching for his missing daughter shared her story on National Missing Children's Day, which was yesterday. So he says that his child, uh, sorry, Ava Baldwin was abducted in 2015 when she was only six years old. Investigators say she may be with her mother, Catherine Baldwin, who has a felony warrant out for her arrest. Ava's father, David Hopper, desperate for her return. I miss you. Uh and you're loved very, very much. You have a large family that can't wait to wrap their arms around you and for you to be home. And uh, we hope that you're safe and uh, just come home. We won't quit. We won't quit. Ava turned 12 last month and Hopper said he is still remaining faithful that he will only one day see his daughter again. To learn more about the search for his daughter and other missing children, you can visit the story on our website at ksat.com. New gun legislation right here in Texas still waiting to be signed into law to remove the requirement for a handgun permit and the training to go along with it. Lone Star Handgun Shooting Range in Converse says they're well aware this new piece of legislation will impact their business. We normally teach about 150 to 200 people every month on the license to carry laws. We have to look at other approaches. Now this business says they support the proposed law and their training courses would adapt. Permitless carry bill allows Texans 21 and older to carry handgun in public. Governor Abbott plans to sign the legislation soon. When he does, it would take effect in September. And time now is 5.09 and about 76 degrees right now. Still ahead, Google is showing off its brand new Android OS for smartphones. We'll get a first look.
Also next, how our latest great graduate from Henry Ford Academy plans to show off her acting skills on Broadway or in Hollywood. Right now, outside with live cam on your early Wednesday morning, Mike is talking more about that lunar eclipse this morning. Details still to come. Welcome back, everybody. About 513 Great Grads continues. A senior at Henry Ford Academy loves to perform on stage and hopes to do that on Broadway or the big screen one day. Sarah Acosta introduces us to great graduate Jessica Willis, who didn't let the pandemic destroy her dream of performing. High school senior Jessica Willis says she has always had a big personality and has always loved the arts and performing. She says that passion for wanting to be on the stage grew while studying musical theater at Henry Ford Academy. Coming here and taking theater classes has um, really made me just kind of like feel confident in myself and what I'm doing. And it's something that I really love doing no matter where I'm at. But the HFA theater program has been put on hold for over a year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Jessica says it was heartbreaking to miss out on performing her senior year of high school. It is kind of sad that I can't like really obviously go out and like perform in front of a lot of people. But um, doing Zoom auditions and stuff was something I had to navigate and work around. But she didn't let the pandemic crush her dream of pursuing acting. She continued to work on her skills at home and audition virtually. That's what landed her scholarships to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth next semester to study musical theater. Obviously, like in my head, like my big like pipe dream would probably be like either Broadway or um, like TV or movies and stuff. She says the 100th Oscars is in seven years and she'll be 25 by then. She says if she can make it there, it would be a lifetime dream. But she says she just wants to be able to tell other people's stories in the future and that would make her the most happy. Just as long as I'm still performing in front of people, like no matter how big the crowd is and that I'm just being genuinely myself, I think that's the best goal for me in 10 years. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Wouldn't it be cool if in uh, in a few years and the Oscar goes to oh that'd be cool Jessica Willis. <laughs> so we're gonna say we knew her or we saw her here Meryl on Street Great Flag. Grad. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. That'd be super cool. <laughs> Good luck. 515 right now, about 75 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you about the newest music streaming service that is offering offline listening on your Apple Watch. I was so embarrassed about paying too much for a used car, I went into hiding in this undisclosed location. <laughs> that used car website had the price all wrong. Remember, if you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on a used car again. Dad, time for dinner. Okay, champ. Shop millions of great deals, all with a free Carfax report. Only at the all-new Carfax.com. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritin and 24-hour relief from symptoms caused by over 200 indoor and outdoor allergens. Try Claritin Cool Mint Chewables for powerful allergy relief plus a cooling sensation. Live Claritin Clear. Ready to shine from the inside out? Try Nature's Bounty Hair Skin and Nails Gummies, the number one brand to support beautiful hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. And introducing Jelly Beans with two times more biotin. today's Tech Bytes, Google rolling out its new operating system. It's called Fuchsia, and it powers Google first generation Nest Hub. The debut comes about five years after Fuchsia was first reported. The muted rollout could give Google time to tinker before Fuchsia goes wider. Apple Watch users now have access to Tidal. Music from the streaming service can be sent directly to the device or downloaded for use offline. The news follows Spotify unveiling similar Apple Watch options last week. Pricing starts at $10 a month. And finally, a major milestone for Sonic the Hedgehog. The Sega Genesis mascot is turning 30 this year and celebrating the special anniversary with a new digital showcase. The event set for tomorrow is expected to include announcements for new projects, partnerships, and special events. Okay, if you're a 90s baby, that unlocks some serious memories. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 519. Let's go ahead and check the rose with Stephen Cavazos. 
Hey, good morning, Mark and Seth. Things are looking pretty smooth for this Wednesday morning, which is what we like to see. This is a view from Trans Guide right here at 2D1 at Divine Street. You can see that we do have a few people that are already getting out and getting ready to get their morning started with us, but nothing too major to report right now. Although we did have a crash that would happen here in the uh, in the eastbound lanes of 1604 right at Stone Oak Parkway over on the city's north side. That crash was impacting a little bit of traffic uh, earlier, but it doesn't appear that it's causing any major issues, at least for right now. So that's something we'll be keeping tabs with as we continue throughout the show. But if you're coming in from 281 uh, from Bulverde to downtown San Antonio, right now we're looking at a seven minute drive time. You'll be passing uh, by that crash if it's still there. So just take some time and give those first responders a little bit of extra room. But heading up north on 281 from 1604 to Bulverde, we see about a six minute drive time right now. Nothing too major, which is again what we'd like to see. One last look here at Transkai from 281 at Divine Street. Things are looking pretty smooth so far. Thank you, Stephen. Mike now joins us from what looks like a rooftop scene from some sort of play or musical. <laughs> yeah, <it's> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. No, I won't sing. But that was a beautiful view last night of the, the full moon. And the lunar eclipse is going on right now. Uh, it did the... Penumbral, that's kind of the early stages of the shadows, best way to explain it, started about, uh, what, an hour and a half ago or something like that. About a half hour ago, the partial eclipse did start just after 6 o'clock this morning. So in about the next 50 minutes is when the full eclipse is going to start, and that ends at 625. Now, the big problem is we got a lot of clouds out there. If you do happen to, you know, if there's a little break in the clouds, you do happen to, to see it, send us a picture. We'd like to see some of that uh, a lunar eclipse going on this morning. By the way, it is called the full flower moon, according to lore. All right, lots of, well, hazy, cloudy conditions. We do have a couple little sprinkly showers. This is clutter right here around the radar site, and just a few of these little specks here and there, maybe a few damp spots on the roads, not anything of any consequence, just that kind of nuisance stuff out there, if you will. And even that uh, area of rain, which was very impressive, just about half an hour, 45 minutes ago, has all but fizzled out up there around uh, north of Austin. And there's still a few showers around there. So if you're going up 35 in toward Austin, you can see a few of those sprinkly uh, showers in Hayes County, but all that energy is working its way down to the southeast, and that may actually help to touch off a couple of uh, showers around the area later on today. High temperature yesterday made it up to 89 degrees here in town, 98 in Laredo, 93 Carrizo Springs, Catula 95, about the same situation. Today we'll have upper 80s and low to mid 90s off to the uh, west and southwest, and uh, yeah, that's about what you'd expect this time of year. Upper 80s, 89 degrees to be exact, and uh, a lot of humidity. That's definitely going to be sticking around thanks to all the moisture in the ground. So throughout the rest of the day today, there may be a sprinkly shower or two off to the east. Tomorrow, uh, we'll have clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing pretty much on Friday, but now I think this kind of rushes things somewhat, but there is the chance for a storm system to try and develop, and that's going to be Friday night overnight into early Saturday, and then we'll have some more showers uh, just the few and far between and this kind of broad brushes things a little bit, but we'll have a chance for a couple of showers or a thunderstorm on Saturday. And again, I think the right now that any rain Friday would be later on into Friday evening. 85 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today. What you would expect 89 a shower or two is possible well off to the east tomorrow, Friday. It's going to be well, pretty much repeat each and every day. Lots of humidity, 90 over the weekend, shower two on Saturday, maybe a straight shower Sunday. Kind of doubt it, but uh, overall, a nice uh, unofficial start to summer, and we'll start to see temperatures drop a little bit first to next week. More cloud cover, and right now looks like another good chance of rain midweek. What's the easiest way for folks to send us lunar eclipse pics if they get uh, the KSAC Connect? Download the app, and right at the bottom, there's thing that says. Pins. Oh, it's on the KSAT Weather Authority app. KSAT right. Weather Authority app, yes. Right, very bottom it says pins. Pins, and okay. go in there and you can select mm -hmm. from your photos and then just, you got to put a little title on there and send it off. <laughs> we look forward to the pictures. Simple Thanks, as that. Mike. 523. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, a popular song artist celebrating a second number one hit, plus a first look at One Night in Soho. A popular teen singer celebrating a new hit, plus details on a record-setting concert. CNN's David Daniel has today's Hollywood Minute. And good for you, it's like you never even met me. Remember when you swore to God I was the only...
Olivia Rodrigo has another number one hit. Good For You debuted atop Billboard's Hot 100 and Global 200 charts. It's the second number one song so far off Rodrigo's debut album, Sour, which came out Friday. Wait a second, like, it, it hit me. Singer-songwriter Romeo Santo set a single night concert grosses record at New Jersey's MetLife Stadium in 2019. If you weren't one of the more than 80,000 people at the show, you can see it when Romeo Santos' Utopia Live from MetLife Stadium airs June 25th on pay-per-view. Info at the Bachata Stars website, romeosantosonline.com. The lights are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, so go downtown. Here's your first look at Last Night in Soho, Edgar Wright's new psychological thriller starring Thomas and Harcourt McKenzie and Anya Taylor-Joy about a woman who travels back to the 1960s to meet her idol. But time travel can be horrifying. Last Night in Soho arrives in theaters October 22nd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What was that? Video of you getting ready in the morning. Oh God, it's just not that dramatic <laughs> or scary. Right now it's 528. <laughs> and ready for your summer vacation, travel is on the rebound, but there's some important information you need to know before you head out to your destination. If your husband would just let you get ready, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> and when you get a new smartphone, computer, or other tech, you want it to last a long time, right? Well, we'll show you the best way to make sure your new tech toys are future proof. And ahead on GMSA at 6, overseas, all eyes are on a burning cargo ship that could sink at any moment and cause an environmental disaster. This Memorial Day weekend, you're going to start to see something that is unlike anything we've ever seen. Get ready for a lot more people on the roads. We have the latest Memorial Day travel forecast coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. No rain in this shot. Very humid outside, though. We're going to check in with Mike right now. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, May 26th. And yes, some people are able to view snippets of the lunar eclipse. It's happening right now. Yeah, we just got a picture from one of our coworkers. Yep, going to show you that yeah, coming up in just a couple of minutes. And right now, I mean, it does not look like good eclipse viewing weather, but there were just thin enough clouds out there in one spot that uh, one of our directors I got a picture of it. Like I said, it's going to be coming up in just a couple of minutes. 75 right now. Normal low temperature. Average low is 69. So obviously we're way above that. Plenty of humidity out there. Dew point at 71. That's when you get up to 70s and even mid 70s in parts of the area over around uh, Castroville and Helotus. That's just window dripping sort of humidity. And this is just clutter around the radar site. And you can see there have been a few little speckles and sprinkles and spits and drizzles here and there. Um, that's pretty much about it. There may be a couple of damp spots on the road. And then even this area, which looked very impressive earlier this morning, that storm complex just uh, died out and sort of fizzled out. But that has some leftover energy off to the east, which may touch off a shower or two off to the east later on today. Mold is still on the high side, but uh, it's almost half of what it was yesterday's reading. 85 at noon, 89 for a high temperature today. Again, partly cloudy skies, uh, kind of like what we had yesterday. A shower or two primarily off to the east is possible today. Not very likely. About the same the next couple of days. Then we have the Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and last check, everything was pretty good. Is that still the case? Yeah, Mike, things are looking pretty good for this Wednesday morning. So good news if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few minutes. We did have a few crashes, but those look like they have resolved now. So let's go ahead and loop on over to our loops and see what we have working right now. This is uh, the drive time from Bandera, 1604 to 410. Expect about a nine minute commute. And if you're going to be coming in from Bandera 410 to 1604 nine minute commute not too bad right now which is what we like to see now drive times if you are coming into downtown san antonio let's look at those inbound times uh from not highway 90 from castroville about 19 minutes right now and if you're coming in from 35 to lytle do expect about a 17 minute commute time and 37 from pleasanton also looking at 27 minutes right now so a good time to head out the doors things are looking pretty good so far on the road so we're going to be keeping tabs on things throughout the morning here's a look at transcott at 281 at hildebrand again things looking smooth so far, but we'll be here coming up with what you can expect. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
New this morning, an 18 year old man was shot twice in the back after someone fired more than 40 shots at home overnight. That man was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Officers say it started around 1130 last night in the 7200 block of Hardesty, just east of 1604 on the city's west side. Six people were in the house at the time and during their investigation, officers found more than 40 rifle casings. The house and the vehicle in the driveway had several bullet holes. No other injuries were reported. Starting today, airports are going to be bustling as people head out of town to kick off the unofficial start of summer. You'll have some company when you hit the highway and Royal Caribbean just got the thumbs up from the CDC to do a test cruise. CNN's Britt Conway has more of what you need to know before you travel. Whether by air, by sea, or by land, Americans are taking back travel thanks to more vaccinations and fewer restrictions. People in the industry say travel is in for a big rebound. This Memorial Day weekend, you're going to start to see something that is unlike anything we've ever seen. Which makes sense considering what this past year has been like. When things are taken away from you, you want it more. What was taken away from us? Traveling and connecting with other people. But connecting might cost you. AAA says Memorial Day travelers will pay the highest gas prices for the holiday since 2014. And the nation's major airlines say airfare costs are near or even above pre pandemic levels. You still need your mask, though. This is a federal mandate and it is based on a CDC order. The FAA says it's got 1,900 reports of passengers violating the mask requirement. But it's not just pushback against masks. The FAA says incidents with unruly passengers have become a big concern. A Southwest Airlines flight attendant was assaulted this past weekend. The Union for the Airlines Flight Attendants is calling for more safety regulations, and the FAA says they're fining people. We're talking thousands of dollars here. So pack your patience and prepare. Talk to your airlines, talk to your airports, talk to your destinations, talk to your hotels. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. The Biden administration enhancing pipeline security after the Colonial Pipeline hack. Pipeline companies will soon be required to report cyber attacks to the Department of Homeland Security. Right now, companies report cybersecurity incidents on a voluntary basis. The change comes about two weeks after Colonial's pipeline was paralyzed by a ransomware attack. The company had to shut down operations, causing gas shortages in the southeast U.S. A source says the new mandate is still in the works. And another sign that the nation is rounding the corner of the coronavirus, the NFL says most of its teams will be able to have full stadiums this year. And the league expects teams will be hosting fans at training camps this summer and are working on plans to do so safely. The NFL spokesman says as of now, 30 out of 32 teams will be able to have full stadiums. He also says the remaining two, the Indianapolis Colts and Denver Broncos, are trending in the right direction. The NFL is working with teams on protocols for mask and vaccination requirements for fans. Fans. The league will follow guidelines set by local and state officials and public health experts. Training camps for most teams will start in late July. 537, about 75 degrees. And do you need something new to try? Lego has revealed its largest set ever. Can you guess how many pieces it has? We're going to tell you coming up and when you can get it. And up next, how the technology that helped the late Christopher Reeve following his accident is being used to help COVID-19 patients fully recover. And taking a look outside with live cam, very humid out there in the mid 70s. We can expect eh, maybe just a few showers off to the east, what Mike was saying. But uh, for right now, no rain in our shot. We'll be right back. 540, welcome back to GMSA. As the number of new COVID cases keeps going down, some people are still having a hard time recovering completely. Ursula Perry tells us about a device that's working to get COVID patients breathing on their own. Behind these doors in this operating room, University Hospital's Raymond Anders was the first surgeon in the U.S. to implant a device called the Transera system to help struggling COVID patients breathe on their own again. What we know is when you're on a ventilator, your diaphragm muscle will atrophy faster than any other muscles. Within 24 hours, you lose 50% of your diaphragm muscle mass. To keep muscles from atrophying, electrodes are implanted into the muscle near the phrenic nerve, which controls the diaphragm. A small battery-powered external pulse generator stimulates the electrodes, and that causes the diaphragm to contract. 
Dr. Anders had used the diaphragmatic pacing device on Christopher Reeve after a tragic horseback riding accident left the Superman actor paralyzed from the neck down. Now, in less than 48 hours after implanting the device, some ICU patients are breathing on their own too. It's kind of like aggressive physical therapy for that diaphragm. So that once your acute injury is over, we can now get you off the ventilator faster. The FDA granted Dr. Anders emergency use authorization for this device at the height of the pandemic, but he's also been approved to use it on high-risk cardiac surgery patients, spinal cord injury patients, as well as those suffering from ALS. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And time now is 542 and we're in the mid 70s right now. Are you one of those people who just has too much time on their hands? Well, never fear. Lego is here. We'll tell you about their new world map set. It's the largest Lego set ever made. 545 when you buy a phone ready for the 5G future or a computer with the size and resolution to render in 8K, you're actually part of a trend called future proofing or anticipating the needs of future technology. RJ Marcus has the top things to look for in the tech of today and tomorrow. 8K, 5G, OLED, it's the future of tech. I mean, as the technology gets better, I just upgrade. Because I guess I want to be like everyone else. Do you know what it means to buy tech that's future proof? Something that can last through the ages. Future proofing means buying tech with the specs to survive the next wave of upgrades. These specs include display, compatibility, and software. I want a new feature. So, what do you need to know? Buying a TV or monitor? Don't worry about 8K. While it's possible to buy an 8K display at a high cost, there won't be any content to watch for several years. 4K OLED is what you're looking for. Also, smart TVs preloaded with apps may seem convenient, but when a new streaming service comes out like Peacock or Paramount Plus, you won't be able to download the apps or stream those shows. Smart devices like Fire Stick, Chromecast, or even a gaming console are what you want. Norton reports it's also important to know if your service providers release frequent program updates. As time goes on, hackers find new ways to break into smartphones, computers, and devices. Patching these holes in the software often will keep your information and your identity safe. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, IKEA is recalling some bowls, plates, and mugs because of a possible burn hazard. The Hero Isk and Talrika products can become brittle and break when heated, causing food or liquid to leak out. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says about 148,000 of these bowls, plates, and mugs were sold in the U.S. At least 123 of them broke. Four injuries have been reported and two required medical attention. IKEA says customers should stop using the products and return them to the store for a full refund. Lego just revealed its largest set ever, a world map. It includes 11,000 pieces. We constructed the map is more than two feet high, three feet wide. The set comes with a white Lego frame and two hanging elements to showcase your masterpiece. Also comes with pins to highlight specific destinations like future trips or where you visited. That's kind of cool. World map costs $250. It will be available on Lego's website starting June 1st. So it's like a giant light bright, if you remember those yeah. at all when you were a kid. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I still have two of them. You still have light brights? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Bring them in. We can use them. We'll do GM SA. <laughs> okay. Okay. But once you stuck the things in there, the picture was kind of ruined because you poked the holes in it. You didn't know what colors to put in, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So it was still fun. It was still fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, we liked it. <laughs> Let's check out traffic. Here's Steven Cavazos. It just gets me excited for the Lego movie, just to throw in my two cents. Everything is awesome. No? Oh, okay. the, oh, oh Seth knows what I'm talking about. We yeah, would know th the movie, I hopefully. thought you were talking about a new one coming out, but that one, yes, everything is awesome. Hopefully, That's hopefully soon. Yeah. Well, things are looking pretty good for Wednesday morning if you're heading out the door in the next few minutes. Uh, let's walk over and see what's happening on TransGuide. This is a view from Loop 410 right at 151. You can see things are moving nice and smooth, so if you're an early bird like us, uh, it's a good time to head out the doors, and we're not expecting or not seeing anything major right now on our roadways. But we have spotted a stall that's happening right here of uh, 410 
and south right near I-10 East. That stall doesn't look like it's impacting traffic, but do be aware of that. If you're heading in that direction, we'll be keeping on to, uh, keeping tabs with that throughout the morning. But again, doesn't look like it's impacting much traffic right now. But as we've said, things are looking pretty smooth. Our inbound times once again looking green. If you're coming in from New Braunfels from 35, do expect about a 25 minute commute time. 29 minutes coming in from Castrol and 37, so nothing too major. Don't expect delays right now, but again, we will be keeping an eye on things. Once again, here's a view from 410 at 151. Things looking nice and smooth. Not you know, compared bad. to other Lego sets, mm -hmm. uh, that at 250, and still 250 is a lot, but it yeah. is cheaper than some other ones like the That's, Death Star and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to say the Star Wars, yes. uh, you know, complicated ones are, are very super pricey. Super pricey. Yeah. Mike, but worth you, it. You were a little skeptical that we'd be able to see the Super Blood Flower Power Moon or whatever it's called. <laughs> flower Power Moon. Flower power. Well, the, the eclipse. It is the, the Flower Moon, full Flower Moon. But this is uh, our uh, director, Kevin, took this picture, just looking out the back door, looking kind of down to the southwest as okay. of right now and I stuck my head out there there happened to be one cloud covering this when I was out there about the five ten minutes ago but there are a few breaks in the cloud so you may be able to see it and the full moon is going to be in just about 20 minutes at 6 11 so this was taken about uh, 10 minutes ago or something like that so um, yeah but it is kind of cool looking seeing the the lunar eclipse and of course a lunar eclipse can only take place when it is the full moon all right we've got well just hazy conditions out there and we'll call mostly cloudy skies there are a couple of holes here and there you might be able to see the lunar eclipse and just a smattering this is a brown cutter clutter keep pointing out and just a smattering of a little bit of light some sprinkles here and there that are being picked up on radar and uh, that has all but fizzled out although that system up to the north may help with a couple of sprinkly showers off to the east later on today not a great chance but just a mention of it and then tomorrow we'll start off with clouds maybe some mist in the morning and we'll have a sort of mixture of sunshine and clouds in the afternoon same thing on friday i think this kind of moves in here a little quick on Friday and again this is kind of broad brush but this model does have and there is the indication that there may be a storm complex trying to develop then Friday working its way down to the south and we will still keep a couple of showers around on Saturday. Um, this one also has a few little sprinkles perhaps on Sunday. Again this is broad brush doesn't mean it's going to be everywhere. Yeah, maybe a shower on Sunday. Uh, other than that, make some outdoor plans this weekend. And it's going to be on the human side, definitely, as we go through this weekend, the next few days. And there are some indications that temperatures may drop down a little bit by next week, just with some more clouds that are going to be building back in here. So here's the uh, the situation as of right now. Upper level steering winds and really that high is going to start to take over. And that's what's keeping us pretty much dry other than those little sprinkles from all the uh, humidity hanging around here. Then we go into Friday late and Saturday. The high scoots off a little bit and we're going to have some little disturbances sliding down in here and that's why we have the chance for a sprinkler two or even a thunderstorm on Saturday. Then going into the first part of the week, like I said, we start to see more clouds around here and this next trough is developing and uh, this computer wants to get a, a pretty good low kind of moving on in here and that right now is looking like it may be a decent rain producer by the middle part of next week. So today 85 partly cloudy skies and again maybe a shower off to the east 89 high temperature that is the average the normal high temperature and going to be right around there right around normal 90 or so we'll call it 90 some low 90s or even mid 90s in the Rio Grande Valley and uh, a couple of uh, thunderstorms around on Saturday maybe a shower Sunday but the next chance of rain is going to be Tuesday and then especially looks like Wednesday of next week. Very good. Keeps it interesting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 552 on your Wednesday morning. And Kylo Ren may be the supreme leader of the First Order in Star Wars, but Kylo Ren's also a pet who needs a home at the San Antonio Humane Society. We're going to tell you more about him coming up. As we wrap up this half hour GMSA, I want to tell you about some pets who need a home up at the San Antonio Humane Society. Looking for another doggy addition to the family? Brando's a sweet two-year-old retriever pup, energetic, happy, and super playful. He's very affectionate. 
eager to be your best friend. If you're hoping to find the perfect cat buddy, Kylo Ren may be the one for you. He's a sweet six-year-old boy who loves to roll around for belly rubs and treats. We won't talk about the Han Solo thing. For more information on these pets, call 210-226-7461 or visit sahumane.org. Great smile. It is a topic we've tried to spotlight here at KSAT throughout the entire pandemic, mental health. Today, Myra Arthur is hosting a KSAT community virtual town hall. She'll be joined by four expert panelists who'll dive into things like depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. It's happening tonight at 7 p.m. You can watch it live on KSAT.com and on our KSAT streaming app, available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and Roku. He's well known here at KSAT and to many of you around the San Antonio community. Paul Venomous KSAT career running for decades and he is set to retire very soon. He started as a weekend anchor in 1969 and covered many historic court cases. His work also led him to develop a close friendship with music icon Willie Nelson. You can add your special message to, our, to Paul online right now at KSAT.com and we can't wait. We're going to have him in the building this Friday. Look for more with him. We'll see him one on one on GMSA at nine Friday morning. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA today, we'll hear the story of a young woman who one day hopes to perform on the big stage, maybe even the big screen. Plus, chilling new video out of Seguin showing what, what could be supernatural activity. And police are still looking for a driver responsible for hitting a man overnight. We will have the latest on this case. And Stephen is keeping an eye on the roads for all of us right now. Flashing lights out there at 10 and Woodlawn. We'll try to find out what's going on coming up at the top of the hour. You're starting your Wednesday with GMSA. A man is dead this morning after he was found with a gunshot wound to his head at a Far East Side trailer park. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, what police know about the possible suspects. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at a humid 75 degrees right now. We are expecting eh, maybe a few showers, but not as much as we've been getting earlier in the week. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, May 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I guess a lot of people were telling me they were ready for a break in the rain. Yeah, a lot of folks are ready. Hey, happening right now, a lunar eclipse in progress. And Mike was a little worried about the cloud cover, but we are seeing pictures from some folks. They're either seeing clouds thin enough or breaks in the clouds this morning. Yeah, I stuck my head out the, the back door about 15 minutes ago. And unfortunately, there's one big cloud right in front of the moon. But <laughs> a couple of folks, a couple of our directors have run out there. And one of them is posting some pictures on KSAC and right now so I'm going to show you that coming up in long weather but yeah there's enough of a couple of breaks in there to to see the, the lunar eclipse and in about 10 minutes it is going to be a full eclipse total and that'll yeah total eclipse and that's going to last through about 6 30 right now yeah it's just hazy out there and again mostly cloudy skies right now 74 dew point 71 a lot of humidity out there it is definitely you go from air conditioning outside and it's just you can feel all that dampness out there this morning and probably have your glasses fog up a little bit. That's uh, clutter on the radar side. We have been watching these few little sprinkles and it looks like most everything has pretty well fizzled out as has that system up there around Austin uh, that may throw a little bit of energy down to the southeast for one or two little showers later on today. Just a possibility of it. Uh, mold is on the high side still, but it has come down a lot over the past couple of days, about half of what it was a day or two ago. 73 this morning will stay. Whatever your temperature is right now, it's going to stay basically steady. Most of the cloudy skies will make it up into the mid 80s at noon and upper 80s and even some low 90s and mid 90s down there along the Rio Grande later on today. And it's going to be pretty humid. This is what you would expect the average temperature this time of year more of the same the next couple of days weekend forecast long holiday weekend the unofficial start of summer that's coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos what's going on sir well things are picking up we're starting to spot a few issues out on our roadways earlier we showed you a view from I-10 or at, at Woodlawn there was an issue there but that looks like it resolved but take a look at this we've spotted a new issue this looks like it was that stalled vehicle we told you about a little bit earlier this is a view from Transguide at I-10 East at Loop 410 you can see we have maintenance workers that are already out there 
they're working to get that uh, vehicle out of the way. We'll get to the map here in just a moment, but we have spotted a stall also here happening in those eastbound lanes of 1604 right at Bitters Row. Doesn't look like it's impacting traffic right now, but that seems to be the main issue this morning. A few stalls that we've continued to spot. Now to that stall that we just showed you here. Well, actually, we'll, let's talk about our inbound times here uh, while we're at it. We have 16 minutes from Lytle from 35 to downtown San Antonio, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville, and you can expect about a 24 minute commute coming in from Bernie on I-10. Now, uh, this is where again that stall was right in I-10 East at Loop 410 South. You can see we do have maintenance workers that are out there working to get that vehicle out of the way, so we'll be keeping tabs throughout the morning and see how this may impact your commute as you head out the door. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to piece together a late night shooting that left one man dead. It happened at the Hidden Lake Trailer Park off East Houston Street outside of Loop 410, and that's on the city's far east side. Our Sarah Costa is staying on top of the story, joins us live from downtown. Sarah, has any information been released about the victim? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. I called the medical examiner's office shortly just a bit ago, and they haven't released the name of that victim that was shot and killed in this shooting. They just said it's a 25-year-old man, but we do know police were called out around 11:20 last night to the Hidden Lake Trailer Park at the intersection of Saints Haven and Saints Ark inside the park. Now, someone found that victim about a block away from where he was shot. They found several shell casings further down the street on Saints Haven. Investigators are interviewing people in the area to find out any information and if there's any possible witnesses. Now, police did say they don't know if it was a if the sus if there is one suspect or multiple suspects involved in this case, they do know that two cars were seen leaving that area shortly after the man was shot. A black Dodge Challenger and a gray or black Mustang were seen leaving that area. So if you know any information about this shooting, you're urged to call police. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say more than 40 shots rang out during a drive by at a home on the city's far west side overnight. It happened around 1130 last night, in the 7200 block of Hardesty. That's just east of Loop 1604. Police say at least one eight year old man was shot twice in the back and taken to the hospital in stable condition. Officers say they found more than 40 shell casings at the scene. Six people were in the home at the time, but no one else was hurt. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding the man responsible for a robbery on the city's southwest side. Happened Sunday, May 16th, near the intersection of West Winnipeg and Humble Avenue. Police say a man approached two people that were sitting inside a parked car, pointed a gun towards the victim, and asked them to get out. The suspect then got inside the car and drove off. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A mother is devastated after her son was shot and killed at an east side apartment complex. It happened Monday at the Antioch Apartments on Upland Road. That's where 24 year old Delon Weaver was gunned down in front of his four year old son. Police say 26 year old Keith Corley shot Weaver after an argument and then ran off. He was later arrested by Madison County deputies. Weaver's mother, LaRonda Burnett, says she is fed up with the gun violence. Mothers like me are losing our children. Sisters like her are losing their brothers. My grandkids have lost their father because of violence that's not necessary. It was senseless. The senseless violence needs to, to, to cease. The family is planning a vigil and memorial in both San Antonio and Georgia, which is Weaver's home state. Corley is awaiting extradition back to Bear County where he will face a murder charge. Right now, it's just about 6.07. Now to a new phase in the investigation of former President Donald Trump and his business empire. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office has seated a special grand jury. And that panel could decide whether Trump or the Trump Organization will be indicted. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, former President Donald Trump lashing out after prosecutors in New York convened a special grand jury to decide whether to bring criminal charges against him. Overnight, Trump releasing a statement saying this is a continuation of the greatest witch hunt in American history. It began the day I came down the escalator in Trump Tower and it's never stopped. This is purely political and an affront to the almost 75 million voters who supported me in the presidential election and it's being driven by highly partisan Democrat prosecutors. The 
development, possibly a signal that the Manhattan DA is seeking charges after a two-year investigation. The grand jury will consider evidence in a criminal investigation into Trump's business dealings and could lead to indictments for the former president, his family, or his company. ABC News has learned that already prosecutors have contacted witnesses to appear before the special grand jury, which will reportedly meet for three days a week up to for up to six months. Prosecutors investigating a variety of matters, including whether Trump overvalued his properties to obtain bank loans and deflated the value of those same properties to pay lower taxes. And the district attorney's office also reportedly looking into hush money payments made to women who said they had sex with Trump. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Sri Lanka is racing to protect its coastline from a potential disaster. A burning cargo ship is threatening to spill some 350 metric tons of oil just off the coast of Colombo. Officials say it's going to be very difficult to keep the ship from sinking at this point, and there are not enough resources to manage the entire spill. A specialist team from the Indian Coast Guard has been sent to help out. Back here at home, 608, about 75 degrees. And their season may be over, but our San Antonio Spurs are still making news today. Ahead, we're going to have the details. And our great graduate series continues with a young woman who wants to one day perform on the big stage or the big screen. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. So for a lot of us, the rain is kind of giving us a break, but Mark saw some showers on his way in. But, you know, for sure, it's going to be humid when you step outside. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 612. So the senior at Henry Ford Academy loves to perform on stage and hopes to do just that on Broadway or the big screen one day. Our Sarah Coaster introduces all of us to great graduate Jessica Willis, who didn't let the pandemic destroy her dream of performing. High school senior Jessica Willis says she has always had a big personality and has always loved the arts and performing. She says that passion for wanting to be on the stage grew while studying musical theater at Henry Ford Academy. Coming here and taking theater classes has um, really made me just kind of like feel confident in myself and what I'm doing. And it's something that I really love doing no matter where I'm at. But the HFA theater program has been put on hold for over a year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Jessica says it was heartbreaking to miss out on performing her senior year of high school. It is kind of sad that I can't like really obviously go out and like perform in front of a lot of people. But um, doing Zoom auditions and stuff was something I had to navigate and work around. But she didn't let the pandemic crush her dream of pursuing acting. She continued to work on her skills at home and audition virtually. That's what landed her scholarships to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth next semester to study musical theater. Obviously, like in my head, like my big like pipe dream would probably be like either Broadway or um, like TV or movies and stuff. She says the 100th Oscars is in seven years and she'll be 25 by then. She says if she can make it there, it would be a lifetime dream. But she says she just wants to be able to tell other people's stories in the future and that would make her the most happy. Just as long as I'm still performing in front of people, like no matter how big the crowd is and that I'm just being genuinely myself, I think that's the best goal for me in 10 years. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Good luck at TCU, Jessica. Well, morning sports. San Antonio Missions trying to end their losing streak against Northwest Arkansas last night. Missions strike first top of the third and keep the lead for the rest of the game. Naturals attempted to come back at the bottom of the ninth, but wasn't enough. Missions end their losing streak. Final score, Mission 7, Naturals 5. The series continues tonight at 7.05. Judson Rockets softball team headed to the Class 6A Region 4 Finals for the first time in school history. Well, they'll face Austin Bowie in Buda starting Thursday night. It's after they were able to post back-to-back -back wins on Saturday after O'Connor had jumped on the Rockets in Game 1 last Friday, 9-2. They forced a third and deciding game after beating the Panthers 12-11 in Game 2 and then rallied to route O'Connor 12-0 in Game 3. Now, after playing on three different fields in the semifinals, it's down to one neutral site for the regionals. Game 1 is Thursday, 7 o'clock in Buda. San Antonio Spurs lose a tiebreaker with the Charlotte Hornets in a random drawing to determine which team would get the 11th best odds to win the draft lottery. 
Both teams finished the regular season with identical records, making a tiebreaker necessary. Spurs now have the 12th pick for the time being with a 1.7% chance to win the very top, top pick in this year's draft lottery. Not very good of a chance no, there. Not at all. <laughs> and things are starting to pick up on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning, Mark and Steph. Well, things are definitely picking up. This is a view from 281 at Winding Way from Trans Guide. You can see we have a lot of our early morning commuters that are already getting out on the road. It honestly looks like traffic is building up, so just take it a little bit slow and give your fellow driver some extra room out there. But you can see that traffic is building actually quite nicely there this morning, so be sure to be safe on your way to work if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. Uh, but things have been looking pretty clear so far. It's been a very calm Wednesday morning, which is what we'd like to see. We did have a start that was right here in those northbound lanes of 410 right at I-10 eastbound. It doesn't look like that's impacting traffic. It looks like it may have even cleared, so not too many issues. But if you're coming in from Seguin in those West, Seguin to downtown San Antonio in those westbound lanes, doesn't look like there's any major issues right now. About a 29 minute commute. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels while we're at it, 35 south, 26 minutes right now. But uh, let's take one last look here at Transguide 281 at Winding Way. Things are picking up as we're getting ready for this Wednesday morning. Very good. Thank you, Stephen. Michael? Yes. Uh, so you, uh, make sure you fire up the air conditioning this morning as you get on the and get on the bus and head off in the car going off to uh, work because we have got and is my little thing not going to work? Bus is not going to run this morning. Oh, darn no. it all. We'll have to drive you to school. Well, that's a good reason just to jump to this picture because uh, we've another uh, shot from our director, Jamie who took this and this was looking off uh, almost directly to the west and right there the building on your right hand side is uh, Central Catholic High School and that was when it was just in the last little phases the moon was right there of the eclipse and now it is in the uh, full form of the eclipse and it's going to be your full phase of the eclipse, I should say, and it's going to be uh, staying that way through about the next uh, 10 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's the well, obviously it's full right now, right? The full eclipse, but uh, and then it's going to be setting, so we won't be able to see any more of it after that. So it's gone now, and then moon's going to be rising as the sun goes down tonight. Did you Got get that? It. Got it. Okay, thank you. Anyway. <laughs> Clear as mud, uh, like this picture right there, clear as mud. Uh, we got a lot of clouds. There are obviously a few breaks, and so we kind of lucked out as far as seeing the uh, the lunar eclipse this morning. And as far as uh, any precipitation today, there may be a leftover sprinkle or two off to the east later on this afternoon. Just one or two of them out there. There's some leftover energy from those storms that were up there around Austin. By the way, nothing's uh, showing up on radar right now. If there's a little bit of mist out there because we had a couple little specks that were showing up on radar and everything is is pretty much fizzled on out now. And uh, as we go into tomorrow, about the same situation, maybe a little bit of uh, some mist in the morning, uh, a sprinkle here or there is possible. One or two of them just kind of scattered about if at you know, if one or two of them pop up, rain chances are not that great the next couple of days. Now, once we get into Friday night and Saturday, rain chances, well, there may be a system trying to move on through here late Friday night. And then Saturday, we've got about a 20% chance for a shower or thunderstorm around here. I don't think it's going to be a rain out on Saturday, but just that, that mention in umbrellas, not a bad idea to have handy. Dew points, humidity, therefore, going to be staying way up there all the way into next week. There are some indications though that we will see temperatures drop down a little bit as we go into next week because got another rain chance moving in here. Clouds will be thickening up uh, Tuesday and then especially in the middle of next week and some uh, right now, you know, it's still a week away, improving rain chances. 85 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today, we make it up to 89. That's normal high. That's where we were yesterday and which means off to the west and southwest along the Rio Grande, we're going to be seeing low and even some mid 90s and the the next couple of days then we'll have about the same as today 89 90 um, maybe a sprinkle in the morning sunshine mixed in with the clouds in the afternoon a couple of showers on Saturday you know maybe a shower Sunday kind of doubt just a mention of it and then Monday looks pretty good and again indications temperatures will start to drop down a few more clouds they thicken up into next week and rain chances by the middle of the week looks awesome for the end of May
-hmm. Yeah, we like that. And I like the 80s yeah. next week instead of 90s or triple digits. <laughs> and, and even long range models don't have anything extreme with temperatures. Hallelujah. Fingers crossed with yes, that. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 620 on your Wednesday morning. And just ahead, don't speed away. We're going to tell you about a very special Hedgehog's milestone birthday celebration. Your mission, stand up to moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis and take it on with Rinvoke. Rinvoke, a once daily pill, can dramatically improve symptoms. Rinvoke helps tame pain, stiffness, swelling, and for some, Rinvoke can even significantly reduce RA fatigue. That's Rinvoke relief. With RA, your overactive immune system attacks your joints. Rinvoke regulates it to help stop the attack. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious infections and blood clots, sometimes fatal, have occurred, as have certain cancers, including lymphoma, and tears in the stomach or intestines, and changes in lab results. Your doctor should monitor your blood work. Tell your doctor about any infections, and if you are or may become pregnant while taking Rinvoke. Take on RA. Talk to your rheumatologist about Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke, make it your mission. If you can't afford your medicine, Abdi may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, in-flight chaos. With more than 37 million people expected to travel for Memorial Day, 2.5 million by air, all eyes are on those rising encounters. <laughs> between passengers and airline workers. The numbers are concerning. The FAA receiving about 2,500 reports of unruly passengers since the start of the year. 1,900 of them refusing to wear masks. Let me be clear um, in underscoring something. Will not tolerate behavior that violates the law. And all this unruly behavior isn't just happening on planes. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the increased number of assaults on TSA employees happening before flights even take off. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Google rolling out its new operating system. Fuchsia will power Google's first generation Nest Hub. Debut comes about five years after Fuchsia was first reported. The muted rollout could give Google time to tinker before Fuchsia goes wider. Apple Watch users now have access to Tidal. Music from the streaming service can be sent directly to the device or downloaded for use offline. The news follows Spotify unveiling similar Apple Watch options last week. Pricing starts at $10 per month. A major milestone for a very famous hedgehog, Sonic, is turning 30 this year and celebrating the special anniversary with a new digital showcase. The event set for tomorrow is expected to include announcements for new projects, partnerships, and special events. I remember the original video game. That was a little easier to play than all the stuff that's mm -hmm. out now. Well, for me, at least. Our 30 years ago. Yeah, of <laughs> it's a long time. Time now is 626 and about 75 degrees right now. So head on GMSA. We're taking a look at millennials and why many of them are now being called the burnout generation. And taking a look outside with TransGuide this morning, things picking up there at 281 and winding way. We are going to check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. A man was shot while standing inside his northwest side home last night during a drive-by shooting. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, how many bullet holes were found on that home? A major milestone in the nation's fight against COVID-19. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Those details coming up. Outside with live cam, the sun is trying to come up. And if you missed the lunar eclipse, well... <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Wednesday. It is May 26. It was really hard to see this morning, but we had a few pictures earlier, um, but it was it was the clouds were in the way yeah. and, and yeah, so yeah. you'll see other stuff. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And that's what you were going to say. If you missed it, we have pictures, so don't worry. Mike's going to show us. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah, yes. A couple of, <laughs> there were a few breaks here and there, um, and now the moon is pretty much set. Exactly. It is in its full phase anyway right now and, and just ending the uh, the full phase of the lunar eclipse and and it's setting, so yeah, it's over. But you're going to see a nice looking moon later on tonight. We should have uh, partly cloudy skies tonight. As you can see, um, yeah, this is one of the reasons why we didn't really get a good view of it because of all the clouds out there. 
there were a couple of breaks obviously here and there and 73 degrees right now 77 in Stinson. I mean, that's just in Castroville as well. I mean, just way too hot and <laughs> mold is on the high side. Plus, of course, there's all that humidity out there this morning, although mold did go down um, compared to the past couple of days, almost half of what it was uh, the past couple of days. So partly and mostly cloudy skies this morning and uh, we'll have partly cloudy skies later on today. Maybe a shower well off to the east. One or two of them 89 high temperature like yesterday. That's normal average high temperature this time of year. What you would expect and all that humidity highs are going to be right around, you know, upper 80s, 90 or so. And that's here in town. So of course, off to the west and southwest along the Rio Grande, that means uh, mid 90s and even some upper 90s in the next couple of days. Then we go into Memorial Day weekend. A couple of showers are possible on Saturday. A couple of thunderstorms around there. It is going to be warm. It is going to be very humid and you know, a sprinkle left over early on Sunday. Otherwise, a nice start to the weekend. Nothing too extreme as far as temperatures, and it does look like long range that there's another shot at some decent rain coming in here by the middle part of next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, it's a nice start for our drivers as well here for this Wednesday morning. Everything's looking pretty green, which is what we like to see. Green should be the color of the day, actually. Uh, take a look at this. This is our inbound times right now, which we show you every uh, half hour. 26 minutes about from 281 to Bull Verde. We have 24 minutes coming in from I-10, uh, from Bernie on I-10, that is. And we also have about a 19-minute commute time from Castroville on a Highway 90. So uh, take a look at this. If you're going to need to fuel up like some of us do here, this is a Bear County gas price right now, 262 Our state average, 273 And around the country, we're looking at $3.03. So if you need to fuel up before you head out on the roadways or to get to your destination, it'd be a good time to do it right now. Uh, one look here at Trans. Scott, as the day is picking up, loop 4, 281 at Hildebrand, that is. Things looking nice and smooth so far, but of course, we'll be keeping on tabs, tabs on things throughout the morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A man shot while inside his far west side home late last night. This happened in the 7200 block of Hardesty near Shanefield and Loop 1604. Sarah Costa is live downtown. And Sarah, were there other people in the home when this happened? Good morning, Mark and Steph. Yes, there were a total of six people inside that house when that drive by happened, but it's not clear if all six people actually live at that home. So police were called out to the northwest side home around 1130 last night. They found more than 40 shell rifle shell casings in front of that home. So both the home and vehicle parked in the driveway were riddled with bullet holes. The 18 year old man that was shot was hit twice in the back of the head. He was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The other people in the home were not injured. Police did not release the ages of the other people in the home when this drive by occurred. Now, as for the suspect, police did not release any information about the suspect. So we don't know if it was one person or more than or there are multiple suspects involved. They also did not release any information about that vehicle involved in this drive-by shooting. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Also new this morning, police left a lot of questions after a man was found dead on the city's east side overnight. It happened in the Hidden Lake Trailer Park at the intersection of Saints Haven and Saints Ark. That's where someone found the 25-year-old victim with a gunshot wound to the head. Right now, it's unclear what led up to the shooting, but two vehicles were seen leaving that area. Police are searching for the driver that hit and killed a man walking on the sidewalk. It happened last night just before 10 in the 9400 block of Parambital on the northeast side of town. That's where the driver hit the 63-year-old man and then took off. Right now, investigators don't have much to go on since there were no witnesses out there. If you have any information, you're asked to call police about the case. A San Antonio father desperately searching for his daughter who was kidnapped several years ago. Ava Baldwin was abducted back in 2015 when she was only six years old. Investigators say she may be with her mother, Catherine, who has a felony warrant out for her arrest. Ava's father, David Hopper, describes her as a happy little girl who was the light to everyone's darkness. I miss you. Uh, and you're loved very, very much. You have a large family that can't wait to wrap their arms around you and for you to be home. And uh, we hope that you're safe and uh, just come home. We won't quit. We won't quit. Hopper says he believes he will one day see his daughter again. We have more about this story posted right now on KSAT.com.
It's becoming easier for families and friends to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The state's mobile vaccine program is expanding its effort to help more Texans. All you need is a group of five or more to request a team to come to you. And that group can be made up of co-workers at a business, members of a family, or a gathering of volunteer or friends. So if you would like to request a visit, you could call the Texas Mobile Vaccine Center between the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. That number is 844-90-TEXAS. 844-90-TEXAS. There it is right on your screen. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Moving on, a major milestone this morning in the nation's pandemic. The CDC reports that half of adults in our country are now fully vaccinated. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. This morning, a major milestone in the fight against COVID-19. More than half of U.S. adults are now fully vaccinated. In proof the vaccines are working, U.S. hospitals are now admitting about five times fewer COVID patients than in January. The vaccines are working extremely well. Less than 0.01% of people who were vaccinated so far have gotten a breakthrough infection. Ahead of Memorial Day weekend, the director of the CDC with this warning to Americans who haven't yet gotten their shots. If you are not vaccinated, our guidance has not changed for you. You remain at risk of infection. You still need to mask and take other precautions. As younger Americans roll up their sleeves. I feel a lot better knowing that I'm safer. They could soon have another vaccine option after Moderna reported its vaccine is 100% effective against COVID in 12 to 17 year olds with no safety concerns. But with the pace of vaccinations still slowing, more states are getting creative with incentives. Ohio says vaccinations surged 45% and 94% among teens after launching its $1 million vaccine lottery. Colorado is now the sixth state to open its own lottery. May the odds be forever in your favor. And in Delaware, state officials announced vaccinated residents can enter a lottery to win cash or one of two low numbered license plates, which by some accounts is an even more coveted prize in the state. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. It is a topic we've tried to spotlight here at KSAT throughout the entire pandemic. Mental health. Myra Arthur is hosting a KSAT community virtual town hall tonight. She'll be joined by four expert panelists who will dive into things like dealing with depression, anxiety, and even substance abuse. It's happening tonight at 7. You can watch on KSAT.com and on the KSAT TV streaming app available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Roku, and any way you stream. And time now is 638 and we're in the mid 70s right now. Still ahead on GMSA chilling new video out of Seguin, what appears to be supernatural activity inside a historic hotel. Also ahead on GMSA, why millennials report more cases of burnout than any other age group. And welcome back. It's about 642. Millennials are the generation born roughly between the years 1981 and 1996. They also have higher rates of mental and physical exhaustion more than any other age group. So what's causing the generational burnout and are there ways to help? Our RJ Marquez has some answers. They're tech savvy, open minded, political, independent, lazy, and narcissistic. But research shows millennials are also burnt out. Longer work hours, stagnant pay, and increasing debt are just some of the reasons for the burnout. One report found the average baby boomer had to work 306 hours at minimum wage to pay for four years of college. The average millennial had to work 4,459 hours. Now do you have any other trips planned? And expenses like health care add to the financial stress. In 1960, the average annual health insurance cost per person was $146. In 2016, it hit $10,345. That's a ninefold increase when adjusted for inflation. It would be great if we just have, you know, friends work. Signs of burnout may include exhaustion, isolation, irritability, frequent illnesses, and mental health problems. If you're experiencing burnout, try some basic self-care techniques such as eating a healthy, balanced diet, exercising regularly, and getting between seven and nine hours of sleep a night. Activities like yoga and meditation may also be beneficial. Experts believe the lack of social life may also contribute to burnout. One survey found millennials were more likely to feel lonely than previous generations. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News.
All right, trending now over on KSAT.com. Scary video showing movement inside a historic hotel in Seguin. Oh. Uh, see the ball? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. like watch, wait for it. There it goes. Yeah, oh my the goodness. Ball rolling across the floor on its own. And then even more terrifying, the shadow of a person <laughs> appears to walk into the doorway. I have chills. Is that chills. heebie jeebies or what? Yes. yes. A little yeah. bit. See the video for yourself over on KSAT.com. Steph and I were just talking about this. I think we're going to run this today on GMSA at 9 and take a closer look. Yeah, I think so. There's an interesting story behind what that. What else was on the floor? Uh, uh, there's They, they light up. I, the, the little. They're, sen they're sensors. A uh, a different. The, 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 that light up, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Our yeah. producer's telling us. Uh, the whole story. So we're gonna we're gonna have more yeah. coming up at nine. Yeah, stick with us that? for nine. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It's not spooky over there in the traffic lab, though. No, 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 no. But uh, you know, it does get me excited. Maybe I'll go watch Poltergeist when I get home. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, things are looking pretty good so far for Wednesday. We've been talking about how good it looks right now. This is over here at 35 at Alamo. The view from Trans Guide. People are getting ready to get their day started. So just take it a little bit extra slow if you're heading out in the direction or extra cautious. That is, we'd like to see that our roadways are nice and clean so far. Uh, but taking a look here at the map, as we said, we've already started to see a little bit of slowdown. So so that green is starting to slowly uh, get a little bit invaded by some of this orange here. You see this is uh, the slowdown that we're seeing in the northbound lanes of 410 right uh, near I-10 West. Traffic slowing down about 27 miles per hour in that area. Uh, another thing we've also usually spot is here around 1604, where we usually start to see these slowdowns at this time of day. About 13 minutes in those eastbound lanes to 281 and 11 minutes if you're coming in uh, from those westbound lanes to 1604. 1604. Another look here at Transguide as things are slowly picking up. We'll be keeping an eye on things. Not you ever bad. seen The Conjuring, Steve? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yes. No, the first Conjuring? Yeah, that. That's mm. scary. I wasn't scared. Oh, you weren't. You're no. braver than I am. I love horror movies. I, well, I do too, but I watch it like this. Yeah, the first Conjuring. <laughs> that was. Yeah, it's scary. Anyway. Ooh. <laughs> Still thinking about that ball rolling around there. All right. It looks the, legit, uh, doesn't it? Do yeah, I? It, it does. looks legit. It does. And it the does. shadow, too. <laughs> mm hmm. We used to always have, when we lived over in Northwood, any picture taken on film in the living room, there was a bright spot next to it. Do you oh, remember when the, 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 uh, the storyteller monitor to your left here moved on its own? I heard about yes. that. Oh. Yes. Okay, back to the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I'm getting tinglys up my spine right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, this was a couple of pictures. We had enough of a break in the clouds earlier this morning. A couple of our directors, Kevin and Jamie, took these shots just before the uh, total eclipse took place. And now the, the sun, or the sun, the moon has set. And uh, we're looking forward to the uh, sunrise, although going to be a lot of clouds out there. Caskey was out running, wandering around yesterday and uh, ran into uh, over there by San Pedro Springs and it is flowing nicely. The aquifer has gone up almost 20 feet in the past month. And that's always, that's such a cool spot over there looking at uh, San Pedro Springs, just the, all the rock outcroppings and everything out there. So anyway, take a look at it sometime. All right, yeah, sun is uh, trying to come up, but well, it is coming up, but it's blocked by a lot of clouds out there. We will see more sunshine later on today. Dew points, therefore the humidity are very high. These dew points are well up into the 70s, and we keep this flow coming in here, obviously off the Gulf of Mexico. And so it's just going to stay very humid for the uh, foreseeable future around here. And that'll be the case even going in through the entire weekend. And with all that humidity in the mornings, like even tomorrow morning or Friday morning, there may be a you know a little sprinkly shower or two here or there. There could be a shower this afternoon well off to the east. One or two of them. Not very likely, though. And then as we go on into the weekend now, Friday, and I think this model kind of rushes things a little bit. Uh, it does have a few showers and even a thunderstorm coming in here Friday. If anything, this would be later on in the evening. I think, like I said, I think that rushes things. And also, this all tends to broad brush, so it doesn't mean there's going to be rain everywhere. Uh, we will have a couple of showers around on Saturday, one or two thunderstorms here or there, and then even going into Sunday, maybe a little bit of a sprinkle. I think the best chance of any rain, though, over the weekend is going to be on Saturday, and that is going to be a, a very small chance of a, a couple of thunderstorms. Today, 85 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon, and then a high temperature up to 89, same as yesterday. That's normal high, the average high temperature, with one or two showers off to the east. Same thing the next couple of days, right around 90 uh, going in through 
the uh, the weekend and a shower or two, a couple of thunderstorms on Saturday. Looks like a slightly better chance for some rain by the middle part of next week. And just uh, what Mark was referring to when I was standing over there at the wall, mm -hmm. this thing is hard to move. It's yeah, very it's heavy. big. And what was it? It started rolling on. It's, it's a whole time. thing rolled forward about five or six inches. Although the platform I was just standing on, yes. that thing moves all the time too. I don't know if you've ever seen. Oh, really? It. Yeah. It. it Goes away from the uh, the big wall over there. Hmm. Like well, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, it scoots out that way all the time. <laughs> we'll keep our distance over here. You know when we had the old newsroom? Oh that was haunted. yes, I'm I'm sure it was. <laughs> look at that, look now, now, now the parking lot is haunted. You just saw a ghost, and you're looking at us. <laughs> just about ten till right now, and about seventy five degrees. <laughs> and tomorrow on GMSA, we'll be speaking with an orthopedic surgeon. She's going to talk girls sports medicine, and she has some off-season advice for younger athletes. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam, waking up on a Wednesday morning with us here on GMSA. The news you need to know before you go, still to come. San Antonio police are trying to piece together a late night shooting that left one man dead. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. Police say they were called out to the Hidden Lake Trailer Park around 1120 last night to the intersection of Saints Haven and Saints Arc inside the park. Someone found the victim about a block away from where he was shot. They found several shell casings further down the street on Saints Haven. Investigators are interviewing people in that area to find any possible witnesses. Investigators say two cars were seen leaving that area shortly after the man was shot, a black Dodge Charger and a black or gray Mustang. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Whether by air, by sea, or by land, Americans are taking back travel thanks to more vaccinations and fewer restrictions. People in the industry say travel is in for a big rebound. This Memorial Day weekend, you're going to start to see something that is unlike anything we've ever seen. Which makes sense considering what this past year has been like. When things are taken away from you, you want it more. What was taken away from us? Traveling and connecting with other people. But connecting might cost you. AAA says Memorial Day travelers will pay the highest gas prices for the holiday since 2014. And the nation's major airlines say airfare costs are near or even above pre-pandemic levels. You still need your mask, though. This is a federal mandate and it is based on a CDC order. The FAA says it's gotten 1,900 reports of passengers violating the mask requirement, but it's not just pushback against masks. The FAA says incidents with unruly passengers have become a big concern. A Southwest Airlines flight attendant was assaulted this past weekend. The Union for the Airlines Flight Attendants is calling for more safety regulations, and the FAA says they're fining people. We're talking thousands of dollars here. So pack your patience and prepare. Talk to your airlines, talk to your airports, talk to your destinations, talk to your hotels. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. Five till seven. Let's take one last look at the roads with Stephen Cavazos. Mark, stuff as things are picking up for our Wednesday morning, we're starting to see things also slow down on our roadways, but in our usual spots here. This is over here at 1604 in those eastbound lanes where there was some construction happening overnight near Houseman. You can see that now that we get people out on the roads, things have slowed down about 23 miles per hour on those eastbound lanes, further up about 43 miles per hour. Another slowdown we've spotted is actually kind of improving a little bit. This is over here in those northbound lanes of 410 right near I-10 westbound. You can see traffic slowed down a little bit to 28 miles per hour, but that's a little bit of an improvement versus what we saw earlier uh, just a little while ago. Uh, but taking a look at these inbound times right now, we do see things are looking fairly normal right now. 17 minutes coming in from 35 from Lytle. We're looking at 19 minutes on Highway 90 coming in from Castroville. And if you're coming into downtown San Antonio from Bernie, expect 24 minutes if you're heading down I-10. A look here at Transguide shows that things are picking up here at 410 Culebra. And again, we're going to be keeping an eye on things as the morning does progress. Thank you, sir. Lots of clouds out there, and boy, is it humid. A little bit of a looks like a filter on this lens right now. Kind of dark in this shot, but we got a lot of clouds and not much of a sunrise this morning. 74 degrees, 77 Casterville and Stinson, and it is just kind of, oh, we're done.